guys. Welcome to another episode of Witticism. I'm Tyler. And I'm Mary. And here's what's happening around the globe. Michigan recently passed a law that prohibits people from owning an animal for at least five years if they have been convicted of animal abuse. While most people would definitely applaud this, people notice that the bill has some curious language in it where it states, no animal or mankind may commit an act of sodomy. Essentially, Michigan has banned anal sex. On an unrelated note, it's being reported that Kanye West is refusing to go in Michigan until this is resolved. If your interests include oceanic charity efforts and also pornographic videos on the internet, well, this is going to be a pretty big month for you. That's because Pornhub, the premier online destination for adult entertainment, has launched a Save the Whales campaign promising to donate one cent for every 2,000 video views through February 29th to a nonprofit in Washington. Wait, what? Breaking news, all the whales are saved. Thanks, perverts. Lawmakers in Georgia have made it legal for people who are legally blind to carry guns for protection. I know for years we were worried about the blind leading the blind. So if you start hearing the phrase, the blind murdering literally everyone they can't see, you'll know where it came from. <laughs> An independent laboratory study examined the ingredients in Walmart's products such as Great Value and Kraft Cheese, which also sell Parmesan cheese and they discovered that the brands contain up to 9% in cellulose, a food additive derived from wood pulp. But between you and me, that's not the only wood you're getting tonight. I know, that line was cheesy. So tonight, just tell me when. Jeb Bush has suspended his campaign after a huge loss in South Carolina. So far, his last tweet was, sorry mom, you're sorry for your mom. How about apologizing to the American people and the suicide hotline operators that were flooded with calls literally every time your face was on TV? Seriously, have you ever seen Jeb Bush look like he's not about to kill himself? Please clap. A woman in Los Angeles recently gave birth to a child and left it in the Subway restaurant. The staff found the crying infant half submerged in the bathroom toilet and rushed to a near, nearby hospital. Well, it wouldn't be the first time someone dumped a foot long in the toilet. North Korea has apparently formed a blooming industry in selling enormous statues of soldiers and world leaders to various countries. It's rather unusual to see one of the world's most paranoid countries exporting almost literal Trojan horses. But then again, I suppose someone would want to willingly hide in the ass of dictator Kim Jong-un. Most single people dread Valentine's Day, but for one Ohio man, he hated it so much, he chopped off his own penis. The man, whose name remains anonymous, considered himself so eternally single on the holiday that he saw no use for his penis and decided it wasn't worth having anymore. Well, either that or he was so deeply in love that he decided to chop off his own wing and wrap it up in a box for his lover. Now that's what I call romance. The search for aliens continues. China decided to uproot 9,000 of its citizens to make room for a 500 meter diameter telescope. Nan Rendong, a senior scientist on the project, said a radio telescope is like a sensitive ear, listening to tell meaningful radio messages from white noise in the universe. With this level of sensitivity, it'll help scientists to search for intelligent life outside of the galaxy and explore the origins of the universe. Another scientist behind the project claimed that the telescope is so large that if it were filled with wine, each of the world's 7 billion inhabitants could fill about 5 bottles from it. So my final thought about this telescope, which I'm sure most of the population would agree with, is screw the aliens, let's drink. Whole Foods is introducing a new marketing strategy to lure in hipster millennials by offering a tattoo parlor in select stores. Because, let's be honest, we've all thought, Man, I could really go for some new ink while shopping for bread and eggs. I mean, it makes sense if you're going to spend $20 on a bag of kale chips and a head of lettuce. You can probably afford a tattoo in the same shopping trip. The company Samsung is warning purchasers of Samsung smart TVs to be careful what's sent around them, as any and all information is transferred to a company third party to convert spoken commands into text. So if you're not too incredibly lazy, it might just be better to just type out the commands yourself. That being said, security experts want to remind everyone that we are reaching an age where basically any device from your TV to your thermometer can be hacked in some way. Which is why I'm leaving to live out the remainder of my days in Hermitage in the remote mountains of Thailand. Goodbye forever, everybody. Well, that's all the news we have today. I'm Tyler, and that was Mary. You stay beautiful, Indiana.
awesome to eat. Hey guys, I'm Haley. And I'm Olivia. And I'm Malik. And here's what's going on in Hollywood this week. On Valentine's Day, Vanessa Hudgens and her beau, Austin Butler, spent their romantic day out in the Red Rock Ranger District of the Consonino National Forest. They thought it would be cute to carve their names inside a heart on one of the rocks. In the park is a symbol of their love, as many couples do. But this seemingly harmless act of love is being investigated as a serious act of vandalism. The couple is facing a $6,000 fine and or six months behind bars. How do you guys feel about this? Do you think she should be penalized, or is this just something really minor? I actually heard about this, and I don't think it's that deep. I don't think it's a big deal at all. <laughs> People carve their names into, like, trees. Like, you always see, like, HS and whoever. <laughs> I'm single. In a heart, like, on a tree. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, not a big deal, and it's a rock. Like, I don't know if you've ever, like, written into a rock with another rock. But if you lick your finger and wipe it, it comes. I also right. feel really bad. Like, Vanessa Hudgens has had a really, really tough like couple months and it's like this yeah. is just the icing on the cake her for dad her. just died like right before she went on screen, right so now like, she's in like almost going to jail for carving her name on a rock it's like pathetic. i mean but it's so five thousand dollars that's nothing she has that money it's she could nothing just... to her but like if it was a norm if i did that and they were charging yeah. me like five six thousand dollars like that would be ridiculous yeah. and she didn't write anything bad it's a heart like, yeah. I mean, it's not, like oh, america doesn't on. love love that's okay america <laughs> we're a loveless country yeah, <laughs> this is it that's why <laughs> Ashley Graham is officially the first plus-size model to make this cover of Sports Illustrated. Graham wasn't just an overnight success, though. She has been modeling since the age of 12 after she was discovered in a Nebraska mall. Now at age 28, she is officially living her dream by starring on the cover of one of the most iconic magazines for her half-naked women that isn't Playboy. In the cover shoot photo, Graham is seen sporting a purple bikini on the coast of a beach, looking sassy and sexy as ever. Graham is a size 14, wears a 38 the bra size and weighs 166 pounds. The year is 2016 and finally people aren't trying to pass off size 6 girls as a plus size. You go girl, eat that cheeseburger. Did anyone see this cover? Is this just a good thing that more plus size girls are making their way into modeling? Um, I don't even, I don't know how, I think that it's just she's a talented pretty girl who got the cover. I just, I think that's great for her. I just, yeah, like I'm, really happy that people are like for a while like you said like plus size models were considered size six so i'm now i'm glad that like a real size woman is like mm -hmm. well, not like a real but like an average size woman is modeling mm -hmm. on the cover something that was normally made for like super skinny size zero models or whatever um but i do think like it isn't like as big of a deal as people are making it like we should just allow anyone to be on the cover and like just because she is a size bigger it shouldn't be like a front page story, you know what I mean? Because like, if it was a normal model, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. I do think that it is a step in the right direction, though. Like, Definitely. honestly, like, if you did this in like 2005, and I know it's going far back, mm -hmm. but it's just like with the ex like with all of the what they're doing with the runway models, what they're doing with everything, like trying to make it like it's okay to be healthy, it's okay to be thin, it's also okay to be normal, it's okay to just be beautiful, you. Yeah. And I think that it's a step in the right direction for women to be allowed to feel beautiful. Yeah. in all body types. Yeah, I'm glad that there are models now that are like being featured on covers that like are like when younger girls look at them they don't like feel like they have to no, conform yeah. to something thinner, you know what I mean? Cuz like there are girls who grow up and they just like are thicker or whatever it is and like they always feel pressured to like look thinner or whatever. I'm just glad that there's more people publicly being shown. I agree. That are of a variety of different sizes because being thin isn't a crime and being bigger isn't a crime. Like I'm just glad that we're getting a huge variety of them. Way to go, Sports Illustrated, right? Amen. Like, all right, Sports <laughs> Illustrated. So, if Taylor joined Shade at Kanye during the Grammys, didn't make you say, "Is dear Jesus," then you definitely weren't paying attention. Earlier that week, Khan released Famous, a song from his latest album, The Life of Pablo, where in his lyrics he says, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. I made that bitch famous. So when it came time for Taylor to give her acceptance speech, she proudly got up there and said, as the first woman to win album of the year at the Grammys twice, I will say to all the young women out there, there are going to be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. It's pretty clear those words were meant to be. Not only are his lyrics repulsive, but isn't Kanye married to Kim K, or did he forget about that because he's too busy being a mega douche? Whatever it is that triggers his memory loss, we don't really care. But good for Taylor Swift for putting that piece of garbage in his place. What do you guys think? Are you Team Taylor or Team Kanye? 
Can I just say, no. I feel, I'm gonna say it, I feel <laughs> like Kanye is like that drunk uncle or like drunk grandpa who just <laughs> rambles and says whatever he wants and everyone kind of was like, oh, okay, and then like kind of lets it go. He's insane. But I heard, actually heard that um, Taylor approved it. Like they were talking about like, can he put that in the song? And she said, yeah. So, I mean, I don't understand why. It's probably all for publicity at this point. Like, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I definitely think that Kanye has definitely, like, gone a little far in, like, a lot of his end. things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, like, I like what Taylor was saying. Like, kind of using that, like, e even if she did agree to it, she kind of, like, twisted it to benefit her yeah. and, like, put a more positive message out there. It's a platform for women to basically, yeah. like, don't let someone undercut your success. And I feel like people in the past, too, like, not just Kanye, have really just, like, ragged on her and yeah. she's a very accomplished person singer and songwriter like she writes almost all of her songs like by herself like it's not like people are writing mm -hmm. songs for her and she just sings them like she's a well-rounded artist and like very respectable mm -hmm. in the world i think yeah in 2011 u.s congress decided that pizza would be considered a vegetable so kate Musin decided that she would become a nun and not just a nun but a marijuana grown and distributed nun Holy smokes! Sister Kate had acquired her love for marijuana when it helped her kick her heroin habit, so she decided it was her calling, a, calling to start a godly trap house. Sister Kate's headquarters is also home to her three children, Sister Darcy, and her children and Sister Rose, a former marijuana expert turned nun. Their business is run out of a California cul-de-sac home, and their products are being sold on Etsy until California state laws have strict guidelines as to who can grow and sell medical marijuana. The sisters are preparing to fight the law so they can keep their business up and running. What do you guys think? Should they be allowed to keep their uh, business up and running? I totally agree. <laughs> I think that we're in 2016. Marijuana is about to be legalized in all 50 states. And yeah, I think that is a, is a good thing for people. I actually read about this. And the problem is like the law is really strict about um, who can grow and distribute because like medicinally. So because they're not a registered vendor, that's like where the legal problems are coming But they in. are nuns. They are women of God. They are women of God uh, who just want to grow the, the holy the holy. But can planet. we just talk about like how this woman became a nun because they made pizza a vegetable? <laughs> I was like, you know what? If pizza can be a vegetable, I can be a nun. And like she has kids and she's like an ex-drug addict. I mean, good for her for like overcoming all that. But like you normally don't hear those kinds of stories from nuns. But like pizza's a vegetable. See, it's like this whole nun story is so crazy, but still in the back of my head, it's like pizza's a vegetable. That like makes me really happy. Like I'm actually really excited about that. <laughs> so the Grammys are long over, but the stars from that night will carry on. To recap some of the big awards, Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars took home record of the year for Uptown Funk. Taylor Swift, no surprise here, took home album of the year for 1989. Song of the Year went home with Ed Sheeran, and Best New Artist went to the lovely Megan Trainer. Taylor Swift opened the show performing Out of the Woods, followed by Justin Bieber, Adele, Kendrick Lamar, and a lovely tribute to Davy Bowie by Lady Gaga. Did you guys watch? What did you think? What did you think? Well, first of all, I just hate Megan Trainer so much, and I'm so mad that she got like new like up and coming artists or whatever because she's been out for like two I don't know years. Who she is. Yeah, she's been around she's, for you know a the very song All About time. That Bass. Oh, all about that's her. That's not yeah. a new artist. But it's not though. new. Yeah. That's not fair. <laughs> I like, guess like she's just kind of getting her foot into the fame door now. But like, it's just I like when like unknown people get it. I thought the Grammys overall because I watched it and I thought that the opening. I thought Kendrick Lamar was amazing. I thought things really started to pick up, but the opening half of it was kind of a snooze fest. Yeah. It was just like one slow, drawn out song after the other. I think that it was yeah. kind of a miss. It was like more of a concert than an award ceremony, and I feel like they need to kind of like. Get back to what it's it about. It should have opened with Kendrick Lamar, I think. Like, that would have been such a great opening number. Yeah. And instead, it was this, like, kind of slow, like, mm -hmm. out of Taylor Swift. I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. Yeah. yeah. The infamous Six. Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo, is under investigation for being a fake <laughs> phony. The big haired TLC star possesses the gift to talk to the dead. But a reporter that has been investigating her for a year claims she just preys on the vulnerable. Caputo has been on tour since 2012 doing readings to live audiences, but recently her fans have expressed that they've been dissatisfied and disappointed with her readings. Just because your husband isn't saying exactly what you want him to doesn't mean she's a fake. It just means that he didn't really like you that much. So do you guys believe in this stuff, like mediums, or do you think that she's a funny? I actually want to go to one. I want to like... So you want to go to one? I'm kind of like skeptical. Like I don't know yeah. if I think it's real or not, but like I want to go and like see what happens. Well, I think that it's... 
I think it can absolutely be real, but it's like, I think it's also a really good way to take advantage of people too. But I don't know. I mean, I've seen her show and stuff and I mean, I, I can't, t I don't know. It's, it's I'm just scared, like, magic of television. television. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna snake me with the death card and it's gonna be like, you know what? I gotta go. I don't wanna die, I'm sorry. We should send you to her and see what happens. No. Get you that death card. Well, I don't have to be the, the experiment. You said you wanted to. You did too. Mm. That was the first thing I didn't have to do. If you know anything about anything, you know that Kanye West occasionally goes on abnormal Twitter rants and makes statements that should probably remain personal. A couple weeks ago, West tweeted about being $53 million in debt and then proceeded to tweet out to other social celebrities asking for help and financial support so he could continue to make the greatest music to ever bless this earth. Kanye's debt is due to his record label closing the doors back in 2011 and his clothing line that does cost a lot to produce but does not make much profit. Do you guys think Kanye should announce his financial struggles and ask for help from social media? I have such a bone to pick with this that I'm like rolling my eyes next to you. <laughs> he is just so absurd. Like yeah. 53 million in debt and it's not personal debt. It's from his businesses and his clothing line. Have you guys seen it at all? Yeah. It's, it's like, like a tattered clothes from it's like Goodwill. A it's like homeless clothes for like a thousand dollars. For two thousand dollars. Who mm -hmm. That's too much. Who? His wife. That's it? No. <laughs> exactly. His, his kid. Yeah, no, and like that clothing line, like I'm sure it costs a lot to produce and fashion shows, like running a fashion show during fashion week, like you have to rent the stage, you have to pay models, like that whole production costs a lot and when you're not selling anything or you don't have like an actual company that like makes output. profit, because like you see some like crazy runway things where like obviously they're not selling like horns that like come off your shirt or whatever, but they do have a business that vibe. has other things, you know what I mean? Like it's more for attention, but this just isn't doing well, anything like for him. this is like his like third or fourth, he's like failed in fashion a lot of times and it's like this is finally like he's working so hard to get a startup, but it's like he's trying to create, but he's not, I mean it's. His creations aren't anything to I, be like, I would say I that his know. like his clothes are trash, but he has started a like a clothing, like style revolution. Like a lot of people are following his style of clothing. Yeah, no, that's you really see Justin true. Bieber, like the long shirts yeah. that go like underneath the sweatshirts with like the jeans or whatever. But he's more of like a style icon than like a yeah. designer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all the time we have, guys. I'm Haley, <laughs> and I'm Olivia, and I'm Malik, and here is Mary with your weekly advice. Eating healthy is something we all strive for. My name is Michelle Miller and I'm a dietetic intern at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Through education and awareness, I'm going to show you the importance of healthy snacking without sacrificing your favorite flavors. Next time you're after something crunchy like chips, Try instead homemade apple chips. Apples are an excellent source of fiber and vitamins and minerals that we're all after. Just slice apples as thin as you can, sprinkle with cinnamon sugar, and bake in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours. After two hours, take your apple chips out of the oven and place them on the stove top to cool. This is what's gonna cause them to harden become crispy, crunchy, yummy snacks that you can enjoy as much as you like. For more ideas for healthy snacking, next time try apple chips instead of potato chips for more fiber and less fat. Instead of cookies, try homemade trail mix for a crunchy, sweet snack with fiber and omega-3s. And then for fresh vegetables, try dipping in hummus or Greek yogurt dip. For more healthy snack ideas, visit www.eatright.org. Thanks guys, it's me, Mary, and I've got a ton of new letters from all of you, so let's just get right into it. This next letter comes from Carla. Dear Mary, I have the biggest crush on this boy at my school. Literally, every girl wants him, but like, my love for him is different. I physically need him. His name is Dalton, and he's the hottest thing since sliced bread. Whenever I'm around him, I feel like I'm gonna poop out of my stomach. I think the more appropriate and less disgusting way of saying that is just simply butterflies. Um, but I'm totally not in his league. I'm short, chubby, and brunette. Guys don't like me, especially him. I honestly think we'd be perfect together if he would just notice me. We both ride the same bus, we both wear glasses, and we both watch TV. Okay, those aren't the bestest examples, but we would really be great together. Can you help me get his attention somehow? Thanks, Carla. 
Hey Carla, you seem really head over heels for this boy and I'm not sure why. I get the feeling you've never actually said anything to him in your entire life. But the heart wants what the heart wants and I can't tell you not to go after this boy so I guess I'll just have to help you out. First things first, if he's into blondes you'll have to dye your hair. No need to go to professional, box dye is fine. The cheaper the better, it won't fry your hair, I promise. Next step, wear more makeup. It just enhances your already natural beauty by hiding your natural beauty and fixing all your flaws. The more concealer the better, and learn how to contour. That'll go wonders. Final step, if you're short, get taller. Knee implants are all the rage right now. I'm sure your parents will help you out if they truly want what's best for their daughter. But while you're waiting for the surgery, skinny jeans and high heels are sure to make you look slimmer and taller. Good luck, he'll be sure to notice you now. This next letter comes from Jamie. Dear Mary, every time I black out I order pizza, which is three out of the seven days of the week. I literally have Papa John's on speed dial. He's the closest thing I've ever had to a dad. Anyways, all this late night pizza munchies is doing serious damage to my bank account. My mom is re ready to, dis to disown me. She doesn't believe that all the money is going towards pizza and she thinks I spend it all on drugs over the weekend. I never remember ordering the pizza until I check my phone log and see the dreaded number. How do I get myself to stop this drunken pizza madness? My mom says I need to stop or she'll send me off to rehab. Please help. Thanks, Jamie. Don't worry, Jamie. I got a piece of advice that is bound to help you. Get it? Piece of? Pizza? Okay, sorry. Not the time for jokes. First of all, stop blacking out. It's really not that hard. Set some limits or just take off drinking for the night. Or, you know, you could always delete or block Papa John's number, but I have this feeling that probably won't stop you from finding other means of getting pizza. Okay, wait, I have the perfect solution. Next time you order pizza, make sure your roommates are around. When the pizza is about to arrive, strategically sneak off to your room and pass out in your bed, but leave your phone in the living room. The pizza guy will call to remind you that your food is there, and then your friends will be forced to pay for the pizza themselves. Then, since you'll be faking your sleep the whole time, miraculously wake up when the pizza is still hot and steamy, and eat away. Now you no longer have to pay for pizza until they start racking up an IOU charge for all the times you owe them money. And then at that point, I would end the friendship. You don't need them. Pizza will love you forever. Okay, guys, well, that's all the time we have for letters today, but stay tuned because we'll be bringing on a guest that needs a little relationship advice right after this. out there who care. Verbal abuse is the most continuous form of abuse that follows you, but it doesn't have to. No need to be one of the 3.2 million students bullied each year. Speak out and seek help. Let's end bullying together. Hey guys, welcome back. We have Alexandra on the show today and she is here to ask for some advice regarding some issues with her boyfriend. So Alexandra, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what's going on? Actually, it's Alexandra. Oh, okay. Alexandra? Alexandra. I think, I think I'm saying Alexandra. Yeah, yeah, Alexandra. So anyway, I've been dating this guy. His name's Tom. And we've been dating for a really long time. I, tomorrow's our two months. But anyway, I have a huge problem. I'm pretty sure he's cheating on me. And I just don't know what to do with myself because I'm pretty sure I'm the best thing that's ever happened to him. And I don't know why he would do this to me. Like, why would he trade me in for some basic hoe? 
Ew. Okay, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. Why do you think he's cheating on you? Well, the other day we were hanging out and he jumped in the shower, so I decided to go through his phone. So I started by going through his pictures and then his messages and his calls and his email and his Gmail and his Google Doc and then his D2L. Um, wait, wait a second. How long was this boy in the shower for? Three minutes and 27 seconds, but anyway. Um, when I was looking through his messages, I found a thread with someone named Matt, which is obviously like a girl who he saved in his phone with a guy's name so I wouldn't be suspicious of it, which I obviously am. And this Matt character wanted to meet in the library to study. And everyone in their right mind knows that studying means hooking up. Like, obviously he's cheating on me. And then when I was going through his Google Docs, there was an essay that he had shared with some person named Sam. And like, I just don't know why he would share it with her and not me. Well, let's not jump to conclusions. I mean, Sam could very well be a boy's name. Definitely not. The last name was Brown and Sam Brown is a girl. That's the girl's name, period, like girl. So, like I said, I just don't get why he would share it with her and not me. Like, I'm his girlfriend. I'm his number one. Like, he should just share everything with me. We don't have any room in our relationship for a third party. Like, it's just not okay. Okay. I mean, maybe you're taking things a little too far. It was probably for a group project. I just, I mean, you're really going to interfere with his grades, I think. I don't care whether... I really don't care what the essay was for. I'm his girlfriend, and I'm his number one. I should come before everything else in his life, his grades, his family, his parents, his career, his health. When he signed up to be my boyfriend, he signed up for me to be his world. So I don't know why he would cheat on me or do anything like this to me. Obviously, I'm his girlfriend. Obviously, I'm the best thing that ever happened to him. Like, what the hell is going on? Okay, Alexandra, or whatever you want to call yourself. Listen, um... I think that if you're this insecure about your boyfriend of two months being involved in a group project, then you're the issue here, not him. Next thing you know, you're gonna attack the poor kid for texting his own mother, okay? He's not cheating on you. I, I mean, I don't even understand. You, you want him to revolve your entire, his entire world around you? Okay, honestly, he has his own life to live and it would probably be better if you just like weren't in it. I'm sorry I had to be the one to tell you that, but that's my job. Are you serious? That was well, so that is actually all the time we have. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to watch next week.